Today we're going to go over a repository and a project that is ex as experimental as can be. It's called Entropics. And up front, there's not a lot of resources available for this project. Like if you want to dive into this project, you have two pre-trained models that are accessible to you. Uh, Llama 3 1B and small LLM uh, 330M, which is what we're going to go through today. Uh, and then the literally the only other model, unless you want to go through and run and set up all the code yourself, is this small neural network, which I'll go through, uh, that I've created, uh, this one here, uh, that I've created um, and uh, trained on my own. But uh, I'll go through exactly what this is and um, why this isn't a pre-trained uh, model. And then so it's not as good as the other models that we're going to go through uh, within this. But so... And that's really, I mean, literally it as far as models. Um, and then you can see the person here, they, they say, um, here be dragons, this is not a finished product and it will be unstable as hell right now. And then so, uh, that, I mean, that's literally it, right? Like this, it's, it's a very cutting edge project. And then so why go over this project? And bottom line is, is that this project is the at this moment in time the open source community's uh, like best uh, representation and understanding of uh, exactly how to replicate and build uh, GPT-01 like the the chain of thought reasoning and so within that this does two things the first thing is is as I just mentioned <laughs> the chain of thought reasoning right that whole chain of thought process that you get with GPT-01. Uh, and then how it does this is this concept of entropy and VAR entropy. And then we're going to spend a lot of time on these two concepts. And then so VAR entropy and entropy are related to each other. And then they're related to uncertainty and then uh, uncertainty within the model, how uncertain it is about an answer and a response. And then that is what guides the chain of thought reasoning. If the model is hugely uncertain, then it goes through and it, and it goes through a, a chain of thought sequence to make itself more certain. If it's more certain, then it goes through and it gives an, an, an output and an, an output. And that's kind of how the model progresses through those things. And then so walking through this, I've kind of broken this down for you. And then so this is a, um, a rebuild of the model and a, we can play with this model using the small LLM. And then so I've added a few things to this notebook here. Uh, the first thing is, is walking through and showing you exactly what entropy is. And then so very straightforward, this is the, uh, the entropy and entropy equation in Python. And so we would just create a, a function to call it calculate entropy. And then in this instance, we're dealing with arrays. So we would just calculate our arrays uh, and then we would build our arrays and then we calculate the entropy in this instance. And then so in this instance, the model is 94% accurate that it can predict the uh, next uh, output in the sequence. So very straightforward, right? And then so that measures entropy there. And then var entropy is the variance of the entropy, var entropy, right? Um, and then so this is a mathematical term that was invented in the early 2000s and then uh, around like 2010s started taking a big prominence and then it has most recently started to take more and more prominence. So in this instance, the VAR entropy or the variance of the entropy is 0 0.08. And so breaking this down a bit further, entropy versus VAR entropy. So imagine you're playing a game where you win or lose a certain amount of money in each round. With entropy, the entropy of the game would represent the average amount of money that you win or lose per round. If the game is fair, the entropy would be close to zero. With VAR entropy, VAR entropy would represent how much your wins or losses fluctuate from round to round. A game with high VAR entropy would have unpredictable or volatile outcomes, while a game with low VAR entropy would have more consistent outcomes. Here's another way to think about it. Entropy. Think of it as the expected value of uncertainty. It tells you what you can expect on average. VAR entropy. Think of it as the risk or the volatility of uncertainty. It tells you how much the actual uncertainty can deviate from the expected value. 
a good example of this is uh, the example that we're using here, casinos, right? And then poker games of, let's say, blackjack. And then so the entropy of blackjack, the variance of, of, of blackjack is very low, even for a casino, it'd be like 49.5 compared to 50.5%, right? The VAR entropy is much higher. You expect to lose a great, a much greater amount than 0.5% on every single hand, right? On every single hand, you're, you're, uh, you go in especially and you are 100% going to lose more than 0.5% on every single hand. So the VAR entropy for a game like blackjack is much higher than the entropy. And so by separating out those terms and by separating out the logic within that, we can get at kind of more things. And then so this model, very specifically, um, that's exactly what it does, right? It combines this uh, concept of VAR entropy and then also this concept of uh, chain of thought reasoning. And then so the best I've shown you the code for and the example now of VAR entry and, and entropy, uh, VAR entropy and entropy, <laughs> as far as um, what this looks like for the chain of thought reasoning. We'll go into the, the actual code itself here. And then we'll go down model main main here. So uh, in the main code, this is the prompt. And then so you can see this is the chain of thought prompt that it gives. And then so it's a prompt, prompt one, prompt two, prompt three. And then so all of this is a uh, just a prompt based chain of thought sequence. And then it combines all of that with all of the math that we have here, right? Math, like all of this math. <laughs> so it's kind of cool, like, right? Like, it's, I mean, it's pretty well thought out and, I mean, really well reasoned, right? So it's a, it's a mixture of uh, extreme prompt engineering, with, like knowing exactly what they're doing thematically, um, and then uh, actually building out the actual code that's involved on top of that. And then here we are, and then we have all of it. And then so now let's play around with a model in this instance. So in this instance, I'm going to use a small LLM, which is a 333, uh, 330 million parameter model. And then so if you're not familiar with 330 million parameters, that's on par with, let's say, BERT, which is a very small model, right? Uh, models in this parameter class, you don't expect much generally as far as an output, like generally nothing. Uh, if they can actually like understand the prompt on, in any way, you consider that a win. Like, and, and then it's, uh, you don't actually like expect coherent sentences, even as the output. Uh, Stone videos. I have a old, really old video of um, candle LLM and uh, mo tiny stories, and then so those models are in this parameter class, the tiny stories models. And then you can see uh, they don't produce like true outputs. <laughs> like the, the outputs that they're uh, producing aren't aren't good. And then so in this instance, I'm going through and I'm executing a lot of code. Here, right? And then so I'm executing the same code from the notebook, which is essentially just loading the model and then adding all the entropics. So adding all the mathematics and then adding that chain of thought reasoning, right? Uh, and then here, this is where we get in and then we can ask it and then we can ask it any questions here. So uh, we, we have here these two questions that we're asking it up front. But so generally speaking, what I want to highlight up front is that again, if, if you're familiar with BERT, if you're familiar with models in this class, tiny stories, this is not the outputs that you would expect from a model like this. Um, what is the capital of France? And so we'll see what happens with these outputs here. Um, but so generally speaking, the capital, also known as the Citadel, is the capital of France and the largest city in the country. It is situated on a hill in the western part of the city overlooking the Seine River. The capital is a historic landmark built in the 12th century and is a ca and considered one of the most important cultural 
and architectural landmarks in the world. The Capitol as a fortress, blah, blah, blah. The building was designed and it was built to be a symbol of the city of Paris. The Capitol is a square shaped building <laughs> with a perimeter of, so uh, it, the Capitol building of France is what it gives, right? And then so, um, it, but it does give us a coherent output there. So once upon a time, here's a story about a rabbit named Rosie who's dreaming dreams of flying. Rosie the rabbit lived in a cozy little burrow in a sunny meadow. She loved to spend her days hopping around sniffing out juicy carrots and juicy clover and chasing after butterflies. But Rosie had a dream that one day she would soar through the air like the birds she had seen soaring through the sky. So uh, these are the outputs, right? And then up front, like, these outputs aren't, like, uh, off the chart. Like, I've never seen outputs like this, right? Uh, these outputs would be equivalent to, uh, let's say, like, a 13 billion parameter model, a 7 billion parameter model, which is very significant because this is, again, a 330 million parameter model that we're dealing with here. So like, again, you want to compare this to Bert and then Bert isn't doing this uh, or anything near this. And then Bert is bigger than this. Uh, so kind of crazy what we get as far as the outputs and then how good it can be with um, this entropics and, and adding this reasoning and this chain of thought reasoning here, right? And then so taking it a step further here, just showing a uh, link to this notebook as well. Uh, and then this is an uh, instance of combining entropics and um, high definition uh, or high dimensional computing. Uh, and then so it's both of them combined, right? And then so this actually, the problem is, is that you have to train, uh, as you can see here, I have this build the vocabulary function. So you have to train your encoder. Um, and then in this instance, I am training it on a vocabulary. I'm training it on 5,000 words, but it's not trained on any other words, right? So uh, it's not going to be like you can't talk to it afterwards because it's not trained on enough words, right? Like it doesn't know enough stuff. Like I'm not training it enough. And I like, I just don't have the time and the compute. This ran for 19 minutes just to get this. And at the end, we can see it goes up to 62% accuracy after 19 minutes of training on a very small model with 5,000 words uh, as far as its total vocabulary. So to me, that's pretty good, right? It goes from a loss rate of 1.07 down to 0.53 within five epochs. And then so to me, that's amazing as far as a loss rate. So what I'm seeing here as far as this performance is phenomenal, like off the charts, phenomenal. I would want to scale this up and then take a look and see and see like what this actually looks like as far as actual real world performance. Uh, and then my assumption would be it's a massive improvement even on this, right? Like we would get even off the charts higher than this, but. I need to train an encoder model uh, on this mechanism first, uh, which would cost significant amounts of money just to train in, into investing right? and, and invest into that. And then so uh, to me, I, I just I don't have money to dump into uh, huge amounts of money to dump into research. I would love to. I would love to just research all the time and do that more than anything else uh, and then dump uh, all the money into it. But that's not where I'm at at the moment. But so where I'm at at the moment is I can train this up and show that if you scale this, uh, this, I mean, this could be the transformers replacement <laughs> and that's kind of where it's at and where I look at this. So, uh, this is really cool. A lot of people are looking at this and talking about this over those, this weekend. Uh, and then, so just getting this out and highlighting this, check out Entropics. Again, you're not going to have anything, um, available to you as far as resources. I'll link this, the, um, GitHub and the two collabs for you. And then, like, that's it as far as resources that you're going to have for Entropics. Uh, so, uh, get at it. Have fun. If you like this type of content, please like and subscribe. Thank you very much.